Hi guys! In this video, we will show you the slicer software of the brand new X1 Carbon from Bamboo Lab. You wanna know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in the previous video, we covered the graphic user interface of the new X1 Carbon 3D printer from Bamboo Lab. If you haven't seen that video yet, Check the video description below for the link, as well as the first video with the detailed analysis of the printer. In this video, we will cover the slicer software that comes with this printer, which is called Bamboo Studio. Until now, we tested a few versions already, since the manufacturer is continuously improving the software. At the moment of this video, we have this version right here. This version that we will talk about is for Windows system, and it's one executable file that we need to run to install the slicer. Once the installation is done, we run the slicer and we need to go through the initial setup wizard. First is the region we are on. Next is the choice to send anonymous information. You can choose if you want or not by selecting or deselecting the checkbox. The next screen is the printer selection. In our case, we will select the X1 carbon only. And then is the filament selection. The slicer includes filament profiles for several Bamboo Lab and KXL filaments so we can include those. This list can be accessed again later in the software. And all these can be added later on, so let's continue like this. Once we hit finish, we enter the slicer's initial screen. Here we can start by logging in to our Bamboo Lab account, or register if we don't have an account yet. This step is needed if you want to connect with the printer because the connection is done through the cloud and not a direct connection to the printer. Also, our presets are saved on our account. This way you will have access to them whatever computer you log in to. Ok, now we can open a new project or open an existing one. The next tab is the Prepare tab. Here we have the print bed representation and all the slicer settings that we need to prepare the model to print. Right at the top are the basic options such as New Project, Open Project and so on. In here you can import the models in 3MF, STL, STP and STEP OBJ and AMF formats. It's also possible to export a file. Next are a few additional options. In Edit, you can undo, cut, copy, select and so on. In View, you can change the view angle and also change the view perspective. Next are a few preferences. In general, we have the language and for this version, we only have Chinese and English available. The units, we can choose if we want to associate file types and to do an auto backup of the project. In graphic user interface, we can choose if we want to have the home page at every startup. And in sync, we can choose if we want to synchronize some of the options. The first option on the left area is the print selection same menu as the one from the initial wizard. And from here, we can edit the print settings. As default, the advanced settings are not enabled, so we need to enable them here so we can access to everything. Most of the settings are related with the printer's hardware, so we don't need to change anything. There are a few additional options such as the spaghetti detection feature where we can enable or disable and the filament load and unload time. Next is the start and end G-code sequence. We can check and modify them if we need to. 
The last tab is the printer's motion settings that include all the settings for speed, acceleration, and jerk. Under the printer settings is the bed type. There are three options we can choose from, the cool plate, the engineering plate, and the high temp plate. These are quick temperature settings for the print we are working on. The corresponding temperatures can be checked and edited, as we will show in a few moments. Next is the filament settings. Here we can add or remove filament types, as we have seen in the initial wizard. Next, we can select the filament we want to use. Here you can also change the nozzle temperatures and the cold, engineering and high temperature bed plates that we mentioned just now. Next are the cooling settings and the retraction settings. For each filament type, we can change these settings and maintain the name or save with a different name. Since in our case we are using an AMS unit, we can add three more filaments. The number next to them is the slot number of the AMS unit. And for each one, we can check and edit everything about this filament type. For each slot, we can also change the color. This is a nice feature because it gives you a good visual indication of the filaments you have on the AMS unit. For the process, you can choose to see the global settings or just for the objects that will be printed. We will cover this again in a few minutes. Next is the layer height. You can choose one of the many presets already available or type the layer height you want below. You also have the initial layer height and the option for adaptive layer height. Next are the layer width settings and the seam position selection. We can choose between smart, aligned and at the back. Next is the precision and the XY compensations. The ironing options where we can choose between ironing all the top surfaces, the topmost surface or all solid layers. And the last one is for the order of the inner and outer walls and bridge flow. In strength, we can choose the number of walls and the option to detect thin walls or not. Here we can also change the number of top and bottom layers and the infill settings. As for patterns, we can choose lots of different patterns. For the top and bottom surfaces, we can choose between concentric, zigzag and monotonic. In speed, we can modify the speed of different parts of the print, such as first layer, outer wall, inner wall, top and bottom surfaces, and so on. It's also possible to change the acceleration for the first layer and normal print. In support, we can turn this feature on and off and modify all the settings related with supports. We can select the type of supports between Normal Auto, Tree Auto, Hybrid, Normal and Tree. And for the base pattern, we can choose between Rectilinear, Rectilinear Grid and Honeycomb. Last but not least, in Others, we have the settings for the Bed Adhesion, Prime Tower and Special Mode. For the print type, we can choose between Auto and Manual. For the print sequence, we can choose between printing by layer or by object. There's also an option to add a fuzzy scan to the model for the outer wall or for all the walls. Ok, now let's load a model. To load one, we can use the import option from the top menu, click on the add option here at the top center of the screen or just drag and drop the file on the print bed. With the model selected, if we click the right mouse button, we have a few options. One of them is the clone. We can create copies of the model on the bed. It's also possible to do some fixes on the model and mirror the selected object. If we click on the per object edit, we have access to each model on the bed and change the filament type and filament slot on the AMS unit. It's also possible to change a few settings individually. This can also be reached when selecting the objects at the left. So, if we change the filament of one of these benches, which in this case is a blue filament, the benchy on the bed will assume the same color. It's also possible to export the STL, 
convert from inches, convert from meters, and change the filament. This is another option to select which filament to use from the AMS unit. From the top options, we can also add new build plates and have different models on each plate. Next is the Auto Orient button and the Auto Arrange button. From the Auto Arrange, we have additional settings we can choose from. Next are the Split to Objects and Split to Parts. These are used with multi-part models as we will see in a few minutes. Then we have the Move button and for these we can manually move or edit the values. Then is the Rotate option as before, we can rotate manually or edit the values. Next is the scale. Then we have the lay on face. And in here, we can select which face we want to be seated on the build plate. Next is the cut feature where we can cut the model. It's possible to select where we want to cut the model and choose which parts we want to keep. Next is the Support Painting. This feature allows us to manually paint the areas we want to have supports. The brown areas are the ones that are already marked with supports by the support settings we selected. If we paint using the right mouse button, we will mask the areas that we do not want the supports. And with the left mouse button, we paint the areas we want to have the supports. As you can see, the areas that were masked do not have supports, and the area where we painted green has supports. There's another paint feature, but this one is for the filament used. Here we have the four filaments that we define to have on our AMS unit, and if we paint an area of the Benchy with that color, the model will be printed with that area with the filament that we have chosen. Next is the modifier, and in here we can add simple shapes such as cubes, spheres and so on. We can then overlap the shape with the model so that we can modify some settings to that specific area of the model. If we select the cube and then change the info from 15 to 100%, we will get a benchy with the 15% of infill all around, except that area where the cube was placed, which will be 100%. And the last option is to select the filament to be used for each object. In this example, we only have one object, but let's load a multicolor one instead and try. To load the multicolor file, we select all the files and drag and drop them on the build plate. The slicer will ask if we want to load the files as single object or multiple objects. Okay, so this one is a big one, so let's reduce it a bit first. At the left, we now have the two different parts of the model. With this model, we have now the Split to Objects button available if we want to separate the objects, but in this case, we do not. Okay, so at the left, we can choose the filament type and slot for each of the two parts. The filament color or slot can also be selected in this button here. The explosion ratio at the bottom let us separate the parts for better understanding. There's one more setting that we can check and change when printing with different filaments, and it's the flushing volumes. If you don't want to have too much filament waste, you can tweak these values so that it purges the right amount of filament between changes. When printing those print-in-place models, if we split to parts, we can select different colors for each part and this way have a multicolor print-in-place model. OK, now we can choose if we want to have a prime tower or not and then proceed with the slicing. 
Here, we can check the details of the print, including the print time and each layer detail. To start the print, we can choose between exporting the file to the memory card or send it directly to the printer. When sending directly to the printer, it will start automatically, so we can choose if we want to run the initial calibrations or not. On the Printers tab, we can access some of the printer's information, such as temperatures, fan status, and print status. There's also the internal camera image, but in this version, we are having some issues getting the image from the printer. The last tab is for the project. We can add additional information, such as images, Excel files with the bill of materials, PDF files with the assembly guide, for example, and text files for other information. And that's it, you guys. These are all the menus and options of the Slicer software that comes with the new X1 Carbon. Hope you liked the video. Don't miss the follow-up videos of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon on our YouTube channel. And if you missed our previous videos, don't forget to check the video description for the links. So, we will see you guys next time. Bye!